Greetings Spartan and welcome back to the UNSC Infinity War Game Simulation Training Program. Today Spartan we will be covering the Battle Rifle. The BR-85 Heavy Barrel Service Rifle is the latest in Misraya Armory's line of battle rifles. These are semi-automatic, gas-operated, magazine-fed bullpup weapons that come equipped with a 2x magnification scope and are optimized for 3-round burst firing. First introduced in 2525 as the XBR-55, the battle rifle gained immediate recognition during the conflicts on the human colony of Harvest, where it was the first human weapon to cause a Covenant casualty. From that point forward, it became a prized weapon among the UNSC armed forces. This led to the weapon being pulled from the experimental stage and being fully adopted by the UNSC as the BR-55 Battle Rifle. And while the design proved adequate, it was modified and redeployed as the BR-55HB. Notable changes from its previous iteration included a slightly lower rate of fire and a longer, heavier barrel. These changes improved the weapon's reliability and handling at long ranges. This is the weapon that would be used until the end of the Human Covenant War. After the war, Misraya once again modified the design to create the BR-85. It is now longer with improved accuracy and a higher rate of fire. It is more than a worthy successor to its predecessors, and like the battle rifles that came before it, the BR-85 is optimized for three-round burst firing, and as such it will be the only mode available within the simulation. The battle rifle fires experimental 9.5x40mm high-powered semi-armor piercing rounds at a rate of 144 shots per minute. And while its actual rate of fire is much higher, the delay between each burst reduces it to this amount. These rounds are fed from a 36-round magazine that can be reloaded in 1.8 seconds. However, if the weapon is empty, this time will be increased to 2.1 seconds as the new round must be chambered. The Battle Rifle can remove the shields of a Spartan 4 with 4 shots and then kill them with only 2 more. However, the weapon is headshot capable so a single bullet to the head after removing the shields will instantly neutralize your target. If you are forced into close quarters combat, 2 shots to the body alongside a melee attack will kill your opponent. Now, because the weapon is burst fire, you can actually kill your target in the same burst that breaks their shields. If all of your previous shots fully connect, then your fourth shot will break the shields and kill if it's a headshot. When coupled with a damage boost, this weapon becomes devastatingly powerful. It can remove an opponent's shields with only two shots and kill them with one more to the body. But if your second shot is a headshot, it will break their shields and kill them in the same burst. So if you get a damage boost, aim for the head. The Battle Rifle is by far one of the best weapons to use in war games. This is because it is very powerful in mid-range combat, and a majority of the engagements within the simulator will be at mid-range. But the BR is no slouch in close-range combat either. Two shots in a melee attack can be done very quickly, and can make short work of anyone who gets a little too close for comfort. Where you will have the most trouble is long range, and while the weapon still maintains a fair amount of accuracy, aim assist functions are limited to 55 meters. Any shot beyond that distance will be much harder to land, and DMRs and light rifles will remain very powerful beyond this range. So in these situations, you will have to focus on trying to close the gap and preventing them from retaining that advantage. Your biggest threat is actually going to be other battle rifles and carbines. In these fights, you will have to learn how to strafe from side to side to avoid their shots while simultaneously focusing on landing your own. This is less crucial if you land the first shot before your opponent is ready, but fights will often come down to who can land their shots most efficiently while avoiding their opponent's shots. The only other advice that I can offer is that while the battle rifle is great for offensive tactics, don't be too aggressive. Running headlong into fights is a great way to get yourself killed. Keep enemies at arm's reach where you can pick them off, but not so far away where landing shots is going to be difficult for you. If you can remain offensive without becoming overly aggressive, it can be easy to maintain map dominance. So, we are going to build a loadout designed to allow you to retain and hold that dominance. For our secondary weapon, we are going to be using the Bolt Shot. This is a great backup for any ranged weapon. 
The ability to quickly eliminate close quarters threats is nothing to scoff at, and one of the best ways to use this weapon is for ambushes, when you know an opponent is coming up a lift or by luring them around a corner. However, it does have a very short range and charge time, so don't become too reliant on it. It's easy to get yourself killed if you become overconfident. For our explosives, we are going to select Fragmentation Grenades. These grenades are very flexible and can be bounced around corners with relative ease. They detonate a short moment after contact with any surface, which means that you can control when they explode. Use these grenades to drop enemy shields, then finish them with a headshot. Once you become proficient with them, you'll be able to throw the grenade right where you want it and be ready to land the headshot just as it explodes. For our armor ability, the jetpack will grant us a massive increase in our vertical movements allowing us to quickly reach high locations or bypass obstacles in our path. This will be your greatest tool in maintaining map control. Use it to reach advantageous positions and power weapons quickly. The only drawback is that while you're in the air, you won't have any capability to dodge incoming fire, so be careful about where you use the jetpack and what altitude you reach. Don't fly any higher than you have to. For our tactical package, we'll take mobility to help us cover long distances very quickly by granting us unlimited sprint capabilities. When combined with the jetpack, mobility will massively increase our map control potential. We'll be able to reach power weapons and advantageous positions much faster and escape from undesirable situations. And to complete our map control build, we will be selecting Drop Recon. Drop Recon will show an ordnance drop on your HUD long before it actually arrives, allowing you to claim it before anyone even knows it's there. Alongside mobility and the jetpack, this will grant you the potential to control all power weapons on the map. It's also good to tell your squad when and where a weapon will drop in case you can't claim it and allow your team to retain the power weapon advantage. Overall, the Battle Rifle is one of the best weapons that you can take into combat with you. It is very effective in most of the engagements you'll be in and only truly suffers at long range. As long as you can learn to land a consistent 4-shot kill, you will become a force to be reckoned with. After all, you know what they say, you're going into battle, bring your Battle Rifle. Thank you for watching this episode of my Halo 4 Weapon Guides. If you enjoyed it, please check out my other videos and be sure to stay tuned for more to come. As always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt and I'll see you next time.